The year is 2001 and you are 5 years old. You find yourself booting up your good old PlayStation 1 and decide to finally take a plunge into a stealth title that has been sitting in your collection for a while. A game that features full voice acting, cinematic cutscenes, and a focus on sneaking past enemies and using your wide array of tools to complete your mission. You boot the game up, the iconic splash screen booms throughout your entire house, and there it is. Sheep, Dog and Wolf. <laughs> That long-winded joke did not really work if you had read the title beforehand, but alas, Sheepdog and Wolf, or Sheep Raider if you're from the US, was genuinely a title that I owned in my small collection of PS1 games as a young child, along with the legendary stealth game changer Metal Gear Solid. I was always unable to really play Metal Gear Solid due to being clueless of what the idea of stealth even was, as I was determined to run in and throw fists until Snake let out that horrific scream. <laughs> So that's where a game like Sheepdog and Wolf comes in. Working as a spin-off of the much-beloved Looney Tunes, Wily Coyote and Roadrunner animations, Sheepdog and Wolf is a stealth-based puzzle platformer that revolves around the wolf, Wily Coyote, being recruited by Daffy Duck on his game show in which the game finds its name, Sheepdog and Wolf. Daffy's show tasks Wily with entering various levels and finding ways to sneak past Sam the Sheepdog and leave the area with one of his many sheep. Again, the title of the game appears to make sense. This starts off simple, with early levels dwindling down to being able to tiptoe behind Sam and quickly nabbing a sheep without him grabbing you by the throat and dealing with you in a comical way that fits the Looney Tunes vibe. However, these levels do surprise and become quite complex, evolving from the simple grab and go concept all the way up to introducing time travel as an aid to ensure you get those sheep in that final goal without being caught. It is a game that oozes creativity, fully embracing the fact that it is a Looney Tunes based game by using crazy gadgets and multiple comedic ways for you to be taken care of, if you so happen to fail. It is honestly surprising the amount of effort and attention to detail that was placed into a game that on a first glance maybe seemed to be a quick cash grab for kids, and while it may in fact be geared toward a younger audience, Sheepdog and Wolf should be commended for the expansive game mechanics it introduced to those at a young age, like myself. Playing games at a young age, we take for granted how these games are slowly building up our abilities to take on greater and more complex challenges. From the age of 5, my ability got me through the initial Spiral the Dragon game, and while that game is an all time favourite of mine, it does present a fairly simple gameplay loop that was easy to get your head around. Sheepdog and Wolf, as mentioned, initially presents that concept of stealth to the player very gently, having a very clear indicator on the screen that provides basic yet crucial information. Green means you're safe, yellow means be careful and red means you're screwed. This is combined with an animation of Sam swivelling his head left and right as another indicator to allow you to understand where you may be sitting in the sheepdog's field of vision. This is all pretty basic stuff upon reflecting 20 years on, but to a young player these concepts could be entirely new ideas being presented to them, they certainly were to me at least. Each level would add on that little bit more to the puzzle, with you gradually becoming more clued on how to best approach each level and nab yourself a fluffy sheep to continue with the game. Sadly, there is a point when Sheepdog and Wolf begins to lose its footing as a game that could be a great introduction to a stealth genre for kids, as it eventually forgoes these stealth mechanics and becomes a more of a puzzle platformer type of game. That is not to say the game dips in quality, far from it. It remains an incredibly engaging head scratcher that even on my replay for this video I was truly having to rack my brain to get through the last few stages. Yeah, if Sheepdog and Wolf was a more focused stealth game like in those earlier stages, it could have been a title that allowed those young audiences to get a solid footing in a genre that has spawned some of the best titles of all time. Now I know that's a big ask of a game that's primarily out to let you have a laugh at the expense of a coyote running into walls and being choked to death, however the steep difficulty curve in the middle of the game does beg the question of who is this game designed for? Still, if one can get past the challenge at a young age there is plenty here that may allow them to take a stab at a more complex game like Metal Gear Solid. Once they're of age of course. The use of tools throughout Sheepdog and Wolf, the sneaking around, lurking in the shadows and especially hiding in the bush all resonates with those game mechanics that were just a few of the reasons that Metal Gear Solid became the stealth juggernaut that it still is to this day. If Sheepdog and Wolf back in 2001 was willing to try and introduce a whole new genre of game to a wider audience for an accessible and enjoyable romp for the world of Looney Tunes, then perhaps kids games should not be written off so quickly. Then again, kids 15 years younger than me are better at Warzone, so maybe I just suck at games. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video which was made in honour of our stealth season going on over at Jump Cut Play, which is celebrating the release of Hitman 3. For more content like this be sure to check out our editor in chief Sam's video that takes a look at the legacy COD Zombies has gained over the last decade, as well as checking out our bi-weekly podcast that focuses on all things gaming. 
For all of the written content from the team, head on over to play.jumpcutonline.co.uk to find reviews, news and features similar to this one, where you will also get the chance to pre-order a limited Haggard t-shirt inspired by the iconic PS1 Harry Potter title. And a final thank you to everyone over at Patreon who makes these types of videos possible for their generosity every month.